Alarms blared across the military base as General Ethan Ward watched the alien fleet descending through the atmosphere. They think we're easy prey, he muttered, his eyes narrowing with determination. Let's show them what they're up against. General Ethan Ward, a seasoned military leader with graying hair and a reputation for unconventional tactics, stood at the heart of the command center. Screens displayed live feeds of major cities and remote military bases being hit simultaneously. The alien ships, sleek and menacing, hovered above Earth's surface, unleashing waves of smaller crafts. Status report, Ward barked. Lieutenant Sarah Kim, a brilliant tactician known for her resourcefulness, quickly responded. Initial strikes on New York, Tokyo, London, and several bases. Casualties are mounting, but our defenses are holding better than expected. Ward's jaw tightened. Better isn't good enough. We need to hit back hard and fast. Kim nodded, her fingers flying over the console. I've deployed our rapid response teams. Guerrilla tactics and electronic warfare might give us an edge. Ward moved to the tactical map, assessing the spread of the invasion. We need to leverage our terrain. Make them fight on our terms. How are we on intel? Dr. Lena Vasquez, the base's lead scientist, stepped forward. We've managed to intercept some of their communications. Their technology is advanced, but we're identifying potential weaknesses. Ward's eyes flickered with interest. Potential weaknesses? Vasquez nodded, her expression serious. Their drones and communication networks are susceptible to MCs. If we can disrupt their tech, we might level the playing field. Good. Coordinate with Kim and get those MPs deployed, Ward ordered. We'll make them regret underestimating us. The base shook with the impact of another alien strike. Ward's expression remained steely. Prepare for counterattack. Let's show them what Earth can do. As the team moved with practiced efficiency, Ward couldn't help but reflect on the gravity of the situation. The aliens, led by Commander Zorath, believed humanity would crumble under their assault. But Ward knew better. Earth had faced insurmountable odds before, and it had always found a way to survive. The first wave of human counterattacks was swift and brutal. Small, agile units engaged in hit-and-run tactics, using the dense forests and urban ruins to their advantage. Alien patrols found themselves ambushed and overwhelmed by the unexpected ferocity of the human defenders. In the heart of New York City, Lieutenant Kim led a squad through the labyrinthine streets. Hit them hard and vanish, she instructed, eyes sharp with determination. Her team, moving like shadows, struck quickly, disabling alien drones and disappearing before the enemy could react. Meanwhile, in the command center, Ward coordinated the broader strategy. He watched the live feeds, his mind working through the chaos. The aliens were advanced, but they were also arrogant, believing their technology would ensure a swift victory. Ward planned to turn that arrogance against them. Dr. Vasquez, Ward called out. How are we on those imps? Vasquez, surrounded by a team of scientists, responded promptly. We've modified our existing tech. EMP grenades are ready for deployment. Excellent, Ward said. Kim, coordinate with Vasquez. Use the MPs to disrupt their comms and tech. We need to create chaos in their ranks. Kim acknowledged the order, already relaying instructions to her units. Moments later, the first EMP grenades were deployed, sending out pulses that fried alien electronics. Drones fell from the sky, and alien soldiers found their weapons suddenly useless. In Tokyo, a similar scene played out. Human forces, utilizing guerrilla tactics and electronic warfare, struck at the heart of the alien invasion. The element of surprise was on their side, and the aliens, caught off guard by the resilience and ingenuity of the humans, began to falter. Back at the command center, Ward received a report from one of the field commanders. General, our forces are holding. The Emps are working. We've managed to push the aliens back in several key locations. 
Ward allowed himself a brief moment of satisfaction. Good work. Keep the pressure on. We can't let them regroup. As the battle raged on, Ward's mind was already moving to the next phase. He gathered his key officers, including Kim and Vasquez, to discuss their strategy. We've bought ourselves some time, but we need to capitalize on this. Kim, what's your assessment? Kim, her face illuminated by the tactical map, spoke confidently. We need to lure them into terrain traps. Force them into areas where we have the advantage. Forests, urban ruins, mountains, places where their tech is less effective. Ward nodded. Agreed. And Vasquez, continue analyzing their tech. Any vulnerability we can exploit, we use it. Vasquez nodded, determination in her eyes. We're on it, General. Ward looked around the room, meeting the eyes of his officers. This is our home. They came here, expecting an easy victory. We're going to make sure they leave, knowing they picked the wrong planet. The ground shook again, with the impact of another strike. But this time, Ward's team was ready. The order was given, and the counterattack was launched. Guerrilla units moved with precision. Emps were deployed strategically. And the human forces, united in their resolve, fought back with a ferocity that caught the aliens by surprise. In the heart of the battle, Ward's voice came over the comms, steady and resolute. Remember, we fight for each other, for our families, for our future. Let's show them what it means to be human. As the sun set on the first day of the invasion, the tide began to turn. The aliens, who had once viewed Earth as an easy target, now faced a determined and ingenious enemy, and in the command center, General Ethan Ward stood ready, his eyes fixed on the horizon, knowing that the fight was far from over. As the team finalized their plans, the ground shook with the impact of another alien strike, and Ward gave the order to initiate the counterattack. Hit them hard and vanish, Sarah Kim instructed her team, eyes sharp with determination. We make them regret stepping foot on Earth. The sun was just beginning to set, casting long shadows over the forest, where Lieutenant Sarah Kim had set up her command post. She scanned the terrain, ensuring her team was hidden among the dense foliage. The alien patrol would be here any minute, and they had to be ready. Positions, everyone, Kim whispered into her comm. Remember, speed and stealth. No heroics. Around her, soldiers crouched in their makeshift cover, ready to strike. The alien patrol, unaware of the ambush, moved closer, their metallic footsteps crunching the underbrush. Kim waited until they were within range before giving the signal. Now, her team sprang into action, launching a coordinated attack. EMP grenades exploded, disrupting the aliens' advanced technology. In the confusion, the soldiers moved swiftly, taking down the disoriented invaders with precise strikes. Kim watched as the aliens fell, her heart pounding with adrenaline. Good work, team. Fall back to the rally point. They retreated into the forest, leaving the decimated patrol behind. It was a small victory, but each win chipped away at the aliens' confidence. Back at the rally point, she debriefed her team. That was textbook perfect, she praised. We need to keep them on the defensive. Next target is the supply convoy moving through the Northern Pass. The team nodded, their spirits high. They had learned to use Earth's diverse terrain to their advantage, striking quickly and disappearing before the aliens could mount a proper response. Meanwhile, General Ward was in his command center, monitoring the situation through satellite feeds. He smiled at the reports of successful skirmishes. Kim's doing an excellent job out there, he remarked to Dr. Lena Vasquez, who was working on her analysis of alien tech. She's one of our best, Vasquez replied, not looking up from her work. Speaking of which, I've found something interesting in their communication network. It seems they're struggling with our guerrilla tactics. Ward leaned in, intrigued. How so? They're not used to fighting an enemy that doesn't engage directly. Their formations are rigid, their response is predictable. We can exploit that. Ward nodded, his mind racing with possibilities. 
Let's keep the pressure on. Have Kim's team hit their logistics. Starve them out. Vasquez agreed. I'll also work on a way to disrupt their drones. If we can cut off their surveillance, they'll be even more blind. As night fell, Kim's team prepared for their next mission. They moved silently through the forest, reaching the northern pass where the alien supply convoy was expected. Using night vision goggles, they spotted the convoy approaching, heavily guarded but vulnerable. Ready the EMP charges, Kim ordered. On my mark. The charges were set, and as the convoy entered the kill zone, she gave the signal. The EMP blasts knocked out the convoy's defenses, and her team moved in, neutralizing the guards and destroying the supplies. Another hit, another victory, Kim said, her voice filled with quiet satisfaction. Let's get out of here before they send reinforcements. Back at the command center, Ward and Vasquez received the news of the successful raid. Kim strikes again, Ward said, impressed. We're wearing them down, bit by bit. Vasquez handed him a report. I've also managed to intercept some of their internal communications. Zorath is getting frustrated. He's ordering more aggressive tactics. Ward frowned. That could mean more civilian targets. We need to stay a step ahead. He called a meeting with his senior officers. Zorath is changing his strategy. We need to anticipate his moves and protect our people. Kim, I want you to focus on high-value targets. Disrupt their command structure. Hit them where it hurts. Kim nodded. Understood, sir. We'll keep them on their toes. The next day, her team targeted an alien command post hidden in a remote valley. The approach was dangerous, but they had the element of surprise. Using intelligence from Vasquez, they infiltrated the post, planting explosives and hacking into their systems to gather intel. As they pulled out, the command post erupted in flames, the explosion echoing through the valley. That's one less command post to worry about, Kim said, watching the smoke rise. But the aliens were not idle. Zorath, enraged by the continuous losses, ordered a counterattack. Alien forces swept through the area, searching for the elusive human fighters. Kim's team found themselves on the run, evading capture through a series of narrow escapes. In the command center, Ward coordinated their movements, providing real-time intel to help them avoid the alien patrols. Stay sharp, Sarah. They're closing in on you. We're almost clear, General, Kim responded, her voice steady despite the tension. Just a few more clicks to the extraction point. The chase was intense, but Kim's team reached the extraction point just in time. A transport helicopter swooped in and they boarded quickly, leaving the aliens behind. Back at base, Ward greeted them with a rare smile. Excellent work out there. You've kept them off balance and delivered crucial blows. Kim nodded, exhausted but proud. We'll keep fighting, sir. We'll make them regret underestimating us. Ward turned to Vasquez. What's our next move? We keep the pressure on, she replied, and I've got a new trick up my sleeve. Their drones have a vulnerability we can exploit. During a major guerrilla operation, Ward receives intel that Zorath is planning a decisive strike on a critical human stronghold. He realizes the next battle could determine the war's outcome. This is where we make our stand, General Ethan Ward declared, pointing at the holographic map. We turn their strength into their weakness. The command room was filled with a tense energy. Lieutenant Sarah Kim and Dr. Lena Vasquez stood beside Ward, their faces etched with determination. Around them, soldiers prepared for the upcoming battle, their movements precise and disciplined. Ward's voice cut through the chatter. We have one chance to repel this assault. Our stronghold is strategically important and we cannot afford to lose it. The stronghold, a fortified base nestled in a mountainous region, was bristling with defenses. Traps were set and every vantage point was manned by sharp-eyed soldiers. The natural terrain provided a significant advantage, with narrow passes and steep cliffs that funneled enemy forces into kill zones. 
Lieutenant Kim briefed her team on the final preparations. Remember, we use the terrain to our advantage. They won't expect us to hit them where they're most vulnerable. Dr. Vasquez was deep in her lab, analyzing the alien technology. She had discovered a crucial weakness in their armor, a specific frequency that could disrupt the molecular structure of the alien metal. It was a breakthrough that could turn the tide of the battle. Ward joined Vasquez, looking over her shoulder at the data. Can you deploy it in time? Vasquez nodded. I've already retrofitted some of our weapons with the frequency modulator. It'll give us a fighting chance. As dawn broke, the first signs of the alien assault appeared. Swarms of alien drones buzzed overhead, while ground troops advanced in tight formations. The air was thick with tension as Ward gave the order, engage the enemy. The initial clash was brutal. Alien forces surged forward, their advanced technology a terrifying sight. But the human defenders were ready. Snipers picked off targets from hidden positions and mines exploded beneath the feet of the advancing aliens, causing chaos and confusion. Lieutenant Kim coordinated the defense with surgical precision. Fall back to the second line, draw them into the narrow pass. The aliens, driven by overconfidence, pursued the retreating humans straight into the trap. As they funneled into the pass, heavy artillery opened up from concealed positions, raining destruction on the tightly packed invaders. Ward watched the carnage unfold, his expression grim but resolute. Hold the line, no matter what, we do not let them through. In the heat of battle, Ward received a desperate call from Kim. Sir, we're taking heavy fire on the east flank. We need reinforcements. Ward didn't hesitate. I'm on my way. He grabbed his rifle and led a squad to the embattled flank. The scene was chaotic, with human soldiers pinned down by relentless alien fire. Ward's presence bolstered their morale. Get those frequency modulators online, he shouted, returning fire. We need to disrupt their armor. Dr. Vasquez's modified weapons proved their worth. As the modulators activated, alien armor began to shimmer and disintegrate, leaving the invaders vulnerable to human bullets. The tide began to turn. Lieutenant Kim, meanwhile, led a daring raid behind enemy lines. Her team infiltrated the alien command post planting charges and disrupting their communications network. The aliens, cut off from their leadership, became disorganized and easier to defeat. Just when the battle seemed to be reaching its peak, Dr. Vasquez unveiled her experimental weapon, a portable energy cannon that harnessed the frequency modulation technology. She and her team brought it to the front lines. General Ward, Vasquez called over the comms. We're bringing in the big guns. The energy cannon was a game-changer. Its blasts tore through alien ranks, causing panic and retreat. Human forces rallied around this newfound strength, pushing the aliens back and reclaiming lost ground. Ward coordinated the final push, his voice calm and commanding. Drive them out. We can win this. The combined efforts of the human defenders and their innovative technology overwhelmed the alien invaders. The stronghold held firm and the alien assault was repelled with heavy losses. As the dust settled and the last of the alien forces retreated, Ward received an encrypted transmission. It was from Zorath. General Ward, Zorath's voice crackled through the speakers. You have proven more formidable than anticipated, but this is not over. Prepare for a final confrontation. Ward's eyes hardened. We'll be ready. The human forces celebrated their hard-earned victory, but they knew the war was far from over. The final showdown with Zorath loomed, and they would need every ounce of their strength and ingenuity to prevail. Ward gathered his key officers for a debriefing. We won today because we fought smart and stayed united. We need to keep that spirit alive for the battles ahead. Kim nodded. We've shown them what we're capable of. Now we just need to finish the job. As the team strategized for the final confrontation, a sudden powerful tremor rocked the stronghold, knocking everyone off their feet. Alarms blared 
and a voice crackled over the intercom. General Ward, you need to see this. There's something massive coming through the atmosphere. It's time to end this, General Ethan Ward said, his voice steely and determined. He scanned the faces of his team, each one hardened by the battles they'd fought. We fight for Earth, for humanity. The final preparations were underway. Lieutenant Sarah Kim was running through the latest intelligence reports with Dr. Lena Vasquez. Their command center, a makeshift bunker deep within the mountains, buzzed with activity as soldiers armed themselves for the upcoming confrontation. Ward stepped outside, the cold air a stark contrast to the fiery resolve burning within him. He watched as the last of their forces assembled. Lieutenant Kim report, he called over the comms. Kim's voice crackled through his earpiece. All units are in position, General. We're ready. Good. Remember, the key is to draw Zorath into the kill zone. We have to make him overconfident, and then we'll strike. As the human forces took their positions, the ground began to tremble. The alien forces, led by Commander Zorath, were approaching. Their advance was relentless, confident in their superiority. But Ward knew this would be their downfall. The battle commenced with a thunderous roar. Explosions lit up the sky as both sides unleashed their full might. Ward directed his troops with precision, their coordinated efforts creating chaos within the alien ranks. The humans used every inch of the terrain to their advantage, leading the aliens into carefully planned traps. Zorath, observing from his command ship, saw what appeared to be a disorganized retreat by the humans. His overconfidence grew, pushed forward, crushed them completely. He barked, not realizing he was walking into Ward's trap. On the ground, Ward and his team maneuvered through the chaos. Kim, are we ready? He asked, his eyes never leaving the battlefield. Yes, General. All charges are set, Kim replied, her hands flying over the control panel. On your command. Now, Ward ordered. The mountainside erupted as hidden explosives detonated, causing a massive rock slide that trapped a significant portion of the alien forces. Confusion spread through the enemy ranks as Ward's troops launched a fierce counterattack. Dr. Vasquez's experimental weaponry, reverse engineered from alien tech, proved devastatingly effective, turning the tide further in humanity's favor. Zorath, seeing his forces falter, descended to the battlefield, determined to turn the situation around. Ward knew this was the moment he had been waiting for. I'm going in, he announced, gripping his weapon tightly. Kim and Vasquez watched him go, their faces tense with concern. Be careful, General, Vasquez said softly. Ward nodded and advanced towards Zorath's position. The alien commander was a formidable opponent, but Ward had the advantage of Earth's rugged terrain and his intimate knowledge of guerrilla tactics. The two leaders met in a clash of raw power and tactical brilliance. Zorath, towering and powerful, underestimated Ward's speed and agility. They exchanged blows, each one calculating and precise. Ward's strikes were fueled by the determination to protect his home, his people. Zorath's arrogance became his undoing. You've underestimated us, Ward said between strikes. That's your biggest mistake. Zorath roared in frustration, his attacks becoming more erratic. Ward capitalized on this, leading Zorath into a narrow pass where his size was a disadvantage. Using his surroundings, Ward disarmed Zorath and held him at gunpoint. Call off your forces, Ward demanded, his voice icy. Zorath glared but the realization of defeat was evident in his eyes. He signaled a retreat, and the alien forces began to withdraw. Ward lowered his weapon, but remained vigilant. As the alien ships lifted off, retreating into the atmosphere, a cheer erupted from the human soldiers. They had done it. They had repelled the invasion. Ward returned to the command center, exhaustion weighing on him. Kim and Vasquez greeted him with relieved smiles. We did it, General, Kim said, her voice filled with pride. No, we did it, Ward corrected, looking around at his team. 
every single one of us. In the days that followed, Earth began to rebuild. The scars of battle were everywhere, but so was the spirit of resilience. Messages of support and potential alliances poured in from other alien species, acknowledging humanity's strength and tenacity. Ward stood on a hill overlooking the reconstruction efforts, reflecting on the journey. Kim joined him, her expression thoughtful. What's next, General? Next, we prepare, Ward said, a hint of a smile on his lips. We've shown the galaxy what we're capable of. Now we ensure that Earth is never seen as an easy target again. Kim nodded, a gaze steely. And we'll be ready. The victory was more than just a battle won. It was a testament to humanity's indomitable spirit. General Ethan Ward, Lieutenant Sarah Kim, Dr. Lena Vasquez, and every soldier who fought had proven that Earth was not to be underestimated. As they watched the sun set, casting a golden hue over the land they had fought so hard to protect, Ward felt a sense of hope. They had faced the unknown and emerged victorious. And in that victory, they had forged a future where humanity's strength would be respected and feared.